Hey guys, when I first started the Intuitive Tennis YouTube channel, I released a series of videos that dealt with the topic of whether we should hit through the ball on all the various strokes. And unfortunately, these videos didn't get that many views. The videos didn't have as much of an impact as I thought they would have. So in today's video, I'm redoing this topic. I'm gonna to explain to you in great detail why it's an absolute myth. No, you shouldn't try to hit through the ball. In fact, all strokes we were talking about a forehand a one-handed backhand a two-handed backhand or a backhand slice have a circular swing path and the intuitive tennis teaching methodology is based on how the best players in the world play and it is undoubtedly true you can check the slow motion footage yourself that high level players have a circular swing path so in other words they are not hitting through the ball if you take a look at what happens to their hand or their racket at the moment of contact because that's what determines what we do when we hit the ball. The hit is related to the impact of the strings with the ball. So shortly thereafter, the hand will go across the body on the forehand, on the one-handed backhand, and on the two-handed backhand as well, and even on the one-handed backhand slice. And take a look, when I go through these four shots, here's a forehand, you will see that the hand goes immediately across the body when I make contact with the ball. The same is true for a one-handed backhand, same is true for a one-handed backhand slice, and even a two-handed backhand. And I'm sure if you've seen drills where players are supposed to hit through three balls before they start coming across. And this is something that's still around, unfortunately, when we observe high-level players in slow motion footage, it is obvious that players are not hitting through three balls. What is this all about? And in today's video, I'm only gonna cover the forehand. If you're interested in finding out why we are not hitting through the ball on the two-handed backhand, on the one-handed backhand, and the one-handed backhand slice, subscribe to intuitivetennis.com. All the videos are there. So on the forehand, this is actually really simple, guys. If I'm hitting this way, and my body is completely sideways, of course, my arm will go through three balls before it comes up towards my shoulder. This is naturally what will happen on a forehand that doesn't have any torso rotation. So if indeed I didn't rotate at all, I would have a completely linear swing path and I, will, and I would hit through three balls before coming across my shoulder like this. However, as soon as I involve the torso rotation, things change. Now, torso rotation doesn't guarantee by any means that you will hit in a circular swing path up across and back. You could very easily indeed hit through two to three balls even with a rotational forehand. So let me give you an example. If you started the rotation on the forehand simultaneously, if for example, you went forward and started rotating it at the same time, you will be guaranteed to make contact further behind with the dominant shoulder behind the non-dominant shoulder. Now, naturally, even if you continue to rotate the contact, you will be going forward before coming across. Now, are forehands at the high level struck like this? Yes, they are. There will be circumstances where players of the highest caliber, even Nadal, Federer, and Djokovic will hit forehands with the dominant shoulder behind. But this is only in emergency situations. For example, if they get jammed, they don't get out of the way enough. If they catch the ball late, for example, situations like hitting a forehand on the run or a return of serve, there will be times where players make contact with the dominant shoulder behind. Now, something super interesting happens when this is the case. Players usually don't go for very aggressive shots when they make contact this far back. They will gently push the ball back to play and then look to be more aggressive on the next shot. Now, why could this be the case? It's because when we are pushing through the ball or hitting through the ball, we have very little control. So you could absolutely make power with the linear shot. There's no doubt about that, but you sacrifice control. What the control comes from on a tennis stroke especially on a forehand, is a circular swim path. So guys, check this out. I'm gonna be completely sideways. I'm gonna be forced to have a linear swing path. And take a look, I can get the ball in pretty hard. It doesn't even look that bad, the forehand. But as soon as I start hitting the ball a lot harder, this is where the control suffers. See, the ball goes very low over the net, and I have very little control over the placement of the ball. So what naturally happened to the forehand over the course of the last 50 to 60 years is that the forehand became more and more rotational and the swing changed as well. Players back in the day 
did not have a loop. They would take the racket straight back like this. When this is the case, now the rotation of the forehand is sequenced much differently. When the racket does not have a loop and goes straight back, the forward movement of the racket towards the ball and the rotation of the torso happens simultaneously. And when this is the case, naturally the contact is further behind. And what that means for power is that players will not hit the ball very hard. They will push the ball, they will massage the ball, they will guide it. So the big game changer on the forehand is actually not power, but it's control. Because with more control, now players can absolutely rip the ball, something that they couldn't do back in the day. Because remember, power is completely useless without control. It doesn't matter if you can hit the ball hard if it doesn't go in. So nowadays players are able to hit the ball as hard as they want without sacrificing control. And why is this the case? Because now players are making contact further in front than back in the day. It's at least the contact where shoulders are parallel to each other. And this is possible because now players also have a loop. So here's what happens on the sequencing of the torso rotation when a loop is present. Players will loop the racket in this fashion. So they will, they will not go straight back like this. They will loop the racket. And now as the racket drops, players will start opening up early. That means when the racket starts going forward, in other words, when we start approaching the ball, players are already open. Their chest is towards the incoming ball. So naturally, when we are opening early, so to speak, we are guaranteed to make contact further in front. And what is something that all high level players have in common is a contact on 95% of their forehands with the dominant shoulder in front of the non-dominant shoulder. Now let me show you what that looks like. So I'm going to loop my racket and then I'm going to start opening early. And because of that, I'm guaranteed to make contact further in front. And guys, I told you this is going to be super simple, and it is super simple. The more sideways the player is, the more the stroke will become linear. The more rotation there is on the stroke, naturally the stroke will become more circular. So what happens to the forehand when we make contact with the dominant shoulder in front is the following. Even if we wanted to hit through the ball, we couldn't because naturally the momentum of this rotation will carry us on right-handed players towards the left and backwards. You see professional players line their forehand up like this with a coil and when they're done their chest is pointing towards the opposite side. Now there will be instances on the forehand where there is a little bit more of a pause when players make contact depending on what they're trying to do but generally speaking the rotation is continuous starting from this point to this point and when this is the case this rotation of the torso will naturally result in a swing path that's more circular. Now here's the crazy thing. These things are happening in milliseconds. So players are not necessarily aware whether they're hitting through the ball or whether they're hitting across. And I know this sounds kind of weird, but it's the absolute truth. And it's the only explanation I have why even some former elite level tennis players still teach their students to hit through three balls when Slow motion footage clearly shows that is not what they do when they hit a forehand. And the reason why there's such a confusion is that that part of the forehand is over so fast and when players are hitting the ball, they don't really know what happens right there. Are they hitting through three balls or are they not? And they're not so sure because that's over in the blink of an eye. So most likely what these former elite players are referring to are tips that they received when they were juniors, for example, because hitting through three balls and the linear swing path is something that's been around forever and it's something that's still around today. Now you're probably thinking, what about flat forehands, Nick? I'm glad that I have a flat forehand so I can tell you what happens on a flat forehand. A flat forehand is still a circular forehand. Now the racket doesn't move in the same manner. On a heavy top swing forehand, something that you see on the ATP Tour, the tip of the racket goes vertically across the ball in this fashion. This does not happen on a flat forehand. So on a flat forehand, the tip of the racket indeed comes through the ball. But if you take a look at what happens to the hand when the tip of the racket comes through, we can clearly see that the hand is going across even on a flat forehand. Now, why would this be the case? Because whether we're talking about a flat forehand or a top spin forehand, the fundamentals are going to be the same. The sequencing of the torso rotation is going to be the same. 
the contact position of the shoulders is going to be the same. So the same fundamental elements that we have on the tops of the forehand, we do have them on a flat forehand as well. And therefore, a flat forehand is also a circular up across and back swing path, just like the top swing forehand. Now, if you want to know in great detail what a flat forehand is, it's actually a flat top spin forehand because all modern forehands are top spin forehands. Some will be flatter, for example, on a WTA tour, and some will be hit with heavy top spin. But all high level forehands, and we're talking about a modern forehand, of course, have an up across and back swing pad. This is a flat forehand. You see the racket's going up across and back, and this is a top spin forehand. It goes up across and back as well. So if you want to know in great detail how it works, check out my video on that topic. But in any case, it's not all about control, guys. The circular swing path also gives us more power. Now think about it this way. When we make contact with the ball, if we were to continue going forward and hit through three balls, we would indeed be disconnecting the contact from our core, where we're the strongest. So the more we go forward, the further the hand and the arm is away from the core, and we lose power that way. I'm gonna show you absolute proof that we are indeed hitting across when we exert our maximum power. Have you ever gotten mad on the court and ripped the ball over the fence? I've done it many times and I'm not proud of it. It is a shot that nobody practices, in other words. It's just a completely intuitive shot. Players will grab a ball and they'll just rip it over the fence. Or if you talk about the pro level, they'll rip it out of the stadium. So it's a shot that nobody practices, that nobody teaches, it's a completely intuitive shot. Now take a look when I rip this forehand how my racket and my hand is behaving. Will I hit through three balls to exert the maximum amount of power on this weird shot, or am I indeed gonna go across? Let's take a look. Ah! So you can see in the slow motion footage, I indeed went across the body with my hand. Why? Because I connected the contact to my core. I pull that ball towards my core and I was able to accelerate the racket much faster. So in addition to control, the circular swing path also gives us more power. Now guys, look, I understand that hitting through three balls is a thing that's been around forever. And a lot of pros are teaching this, but there's been one guy, maybe the pioneer of the circular swing path, and that's Oscar Wagner. Oscar Wagner was teaching hitting a cross, or in other words, a circular swim path, many, many years ago. He saw how the pros were playing and he called this methodology uh, play like the pros. I'm not 100% sure with whether this was uh, the name of his methodology, but I know that Oscar would teach his students to play like the pros. And that's basically what it is, guys. We have to set the high level technique as the benchmark of how tennis is played optimally. Now some of you guys might say, Nick, uh, maybe we shouldn't try to play like the pros. We're at the recreational level. Maybe we should try to hit through the ball. Maybe that's easier. Uh, actually, it's not going to be easier at all because think about it. I explained to you today that uh, when you're not using torso rotation, you're going to be more sideways. And what happens when you're more sideways and swinging, yes, you will have a linear swing path, but the arm wheel is going to be working in isolation. On the other hand, when you're using the body's rotation, the body's rotation will support the arm and in fact it will make your strokes more effortless so if you play with a circular swim path this is not only the only way to play if you want to play tennis at the high level but it's also the optimal way to play on the recreational level as well <music>